about the red state path to prosperity. And I earlier today talked to one leading pro-business, pro-growth Republican governors, that being Indiana's Republican Mike Pence. We also talked about his efforts to cut taxes and spending at home. But I did begin by asking him for his take on the current IRS scandal, which is rocking Washington. Take a listen to what he told me. Well, my thought is that Congress needs to do their job, and I believe they will, uh, to get to the bottom of what happened here and uh, how in the world uh, you could have individuals or organizations in this country targeted uh, by the Internal Revenue Service. It's totally unacceptable. Uh, and as I said, I, I think the public has a right to know, and uh, it's the Congress's job uh, to hold this administration accountable. And I'm uh, at least grateful at this point that the administration uh, has also expressed outrage and is cooperating fully with that inquiry. Do you think, I mean, the not-so-hidden uh, motive here by many of these people, it's not just a couple people in Cincinnati, we're going to learn it's a whole network of people, essentially trying to take the conservative groups, whether they're Tea Party or not, yeah. defund them and take them out of the 2012 election. That's the way I read this. Well, and... and, and we need to know more. We need to know what the objective was here, what in the world the rationale was. I mean, we have constitutional protections against targeting individuals uh, with with tax uh, with the tax code or tax action. And I just think this is a this is an enormously serious matter. Uh, I'm confident the Congress will go about its inquiry in a very serious way. But the public has a right to know, uh, and uh, and we need to hold those accountable uh, for this targeting at the IRS strictly. Uh, strictly to the rule of law. Do you, you know, with the oversight committees, um, do you think they're going to need a special counsel, someone who's completely independent of the Ad Obama administration? I, I, I don't know the answer to that, but I, I, I do think that the seriousness of this matter, as it bears upon uh, the privacy rights of individuals, the First Amendment of Americans, uh, it, it just needs to be dealt with. Uh, with uh, uh, with a, a, a level of moral seriousness uh, that it warrants, and uh, I'm confident the Congress will deal with it that Just way. Just last one on this. Is this part and parcel of the kind of government overreach we seem to have had in Washington in recent years? Well, uh, look, no one's been a, a harsher critic of, uh, of big government than me <laughs> over the last 10 years. Uh, but this is something that's beyond that. This, mm. is, this is a matter of, uh, of uh, bureaucratic excess. Uh, and uh, and and I I I was pleased to see the president express outrage about it, uh, and uh, uh, we'll see the uh, the administration hopefully follow through with strong actions, strong corrective actions. But at the end of the day, uh, this is not just one more example of uh, the excesses of big government. This is something worse, and Congress needs to get to the bottom of it. All right, let's go to Indiana. You've just passed a budget about 30 billion dollars, if my homework is correct. Yep. Tax cuts, spending cuts. Tell us a little about it. Right. Very, very pleased that we came out of our first legislative session with an honestly balanced budget. We paid down debt. Uh, we uh, strengthened our reserves. Uh, we actually increased funding for roads and schools, and we passed the largest state tax cut in Indiana history. Uh, and we think uh, at a time when uh, uh, families and businesses in our state, just like around the country, are continuing to struggle in this economy, we think now we really have a framework uh, for uh, getting our economy moving again and telling Indiana's story all over the country and all over the world. You have an 8.7 percent unemployment rate. That's rough. That's right. A quarter of a million Hoosiers are out of work. Yeah. Uh, and uh, as I travel around our state, on a regular basis, uh, we, we see evidence of this difficult economy. But I have to tell you, there's a lot of optimism in Indiana. Uh, people are people sense that our state has been on the right track in recent years, and uh, uh, with this budget, uh, we've made we we doubled down well on our commitment to fiscal responsibility, pro-growth policies, and that combined with our our commitment to, to education reform, we expanded school choice, and we're making a new commitment to vocational education in our high schools. I, I I think Hoosiers know the best is yet to come. Is this the new trend now, the Great Divide? As I say, you have Indiana, Ohio, you can go down to Texas, you can go to Oklahoma, you can go to Kansas, uh, perhaps you can look at New Jersey. Pro-business, pro, you know, 
tax reform, spending reform, pro-business environment versus the old school, the blue states, California, New York, Illinois, uh, Maryland. Is this where the new divide is going to be? Well, it, it may well be. I mean, I was very pleased that Chief Executive Magazine said Indiana was the best place in the Midwest to do business and one of the top five states in the country uh, to do business. And, and that's reflective of our commitment to fiscal responsibility, right to work, pro-growth policies, pro-growth tax relief, and education reform. But uh, look, there's, there's a, a tough competition for jobs, not just between the states, but on a global basis. And I think for America to compete, uh, uh, we, we've got to have this ongoing competition between the states to see uh, who can have the strongest balance sheet, who can promote the kind of pro-growth policies that will encourage capital formation and investment, and I hope to have Indiana continue to lead the so way. So with, with Indiana and other governors like yourself leading the way, does the national GOP, does the national Republican Party get this? Do they have a good growth message? Do they see what you all are doing? Well, they, uh, I, I think they do, and I hope they do. I, I will tell you that uh, uh, after, you know, I spent 12 years on Capitol Hill, that's where we became acquainted. Um, I've spent a uh, little more than four months as governor of Indiana, and I'm more convinced than ever that the cure for what ails this country, including our economy, is going to come more from the states mm -hmm. than it ever will from our national government. Uh, I mean, I, I think Indiana is a shining example of showing that you can have government as good as your people, you can live within your means, you can promote pro-growth policies, even while you provide funding for roads and, and schools and necessary public services. You know, at, in state after state, led by Republican governors, uh, we're demonstrating that you can uh, you can have government as good as your people, mm -hmm. and uh, and I think that uh, those those solutions put into practice are going to have an impact on policies in Washington. Last one. Uh, back yeah. in 2012, a lot of conservatives wanted you to run for president. Are you thinking of running in 2016? You know, I, I haven't spent one second thinking about anything else other than the future of the state of Indiana. And I couldn't be more excited uh, seeing our state legislature renew our commitment to fiscal responsibility, pro-growth policies, education reform. And Just that's the kinds of focused. things that would work at the national level, Mike Pence. <laughs> Just work. the kinds of things that would work. <laughs> they're working in Indiana, and they're going to work even more. All right. Thank you ever so much for visiting with us again. Thanks, All sir. best of luck. Thank you.